soils are the most important resource that we have on this planet. So they regulate and impact on all aspects of life. They affect the climate through carbon storage in soil and uh, CO2 release or sequestration of carbon. You have to think about that a handful of soil contains more life than there's people on the planet. Now that's a phenomenal amount of bacteria and fungi which are in a very small space and they all interact with each other like organisms and plants interact with each other above ground. So you have to see and picture soil as a living environment and a living space within which many organisms interact with each other. Recent advances in technologies now allow us to study soils as they are without taking the systems apart which gives us complete new opportunities to look at soil systems and the way they function. Then we use the software to reconstruct a three-dimensional image and that gives us an opportunity to look inside objects. So now we can see what the internal structure of any sample is uh, without taking it to pieces first. So this is really the, um, the world of view from the microbes. They can really just grow in these coloured regions. So if they're in the blue region, they can't really get into the yellow region, so it gives us an idea of how um, connected the soil is and different uh, management practices like um, ploughing or tillage affects the structure. I don't know, being a physicist, it's always interesting to find out how things work in soil. Well, at first it was sort of fungi by themselves, you know, understanding what controls their growth and development and then actually moving that into a more, more topical area, which is soil, because only about 1% of the soil volume is living, and that's with insects as well as microbes, but they're so critical for sort of cropping and soil fertility. The next thing we then need is to bring that into our experimental systems. And we've started to move into applying 3D printing technology. So what you see here is the internal structure of soil where you can see a very complex pore network that's all connected with each other and through which all the organisms move and find their food sources and interact with each other. And you can see what this looks like. And more importantly, it gives us an experimental system. So what we do is we will introduce fungal hyphae or fungal organisms within this structure and we'll let it grow and spread through this 3D structure. And then we'll examine how the uh, complex interactions uh, that take place is affecting the processes that, that occur, like the release of CO2. So we can now do measurements in addition to what previously was only possible to examine it by model simulations. Because the soil system is a mix of physics, biology and chemistry, we really can't understand it just from coming from one discipline alone. And that's why sort of this mix of modelling, experimentation and um, simulation is really the only way to understand the soil system because if you just look at one component you don't get the big picture and it's, what, it's the big picture that we need in order to m manage it effectively. So much of this research is being conducted in the Symbio Centre. Uh, the Symbio Centre is the Scottish Informatics, Mathematics, Biology and Statistics Centre and it is an interdisciplinary research group that has an open plan office which will facilitate the interactions between theoreticians and experimentalists, biologists and physicists. And it is by having that free interaction which is stimulating novel ways of looking at how to resolve complex problems that we do.